Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the p-value method of doing hypothesis testing. Uh, this was alluded to in a couple of earlier videos. Uh, I want to talk about it specifically in this video. And to do this, we're going to re-examine the storefront problem, except this time using um, the method of p-values. So uh, in this problem, uh, we have a um, storefront, that, a store that's been averaging 3,218 people per day. Uh, we redesign the storefront, and in a sample of 45 days, we have more people coming to the store. At the 5% level of significance, does it look like uh, the average number of people coming into the store has increased? Um, we're going to do this with um, the p-value method, but the first few steps are approximately the same as what we had before. The null hypothesis will be that the mean is still the old value of 3,218, and that the increase that we saw was simply attributable to chance. The alternative hypothesis will be that the increase is a real increase that is not plausibly attributable to chance, and so the mean is now greater than 3,218, some value. Uh, the test statistic that we care about in this problem is z, and z is going to be equal to the observed average of 3,392 minus the expected average of 3,218 divided by the standard error for the average, which will be 287, divided by the square root of 45. And so that works out to be, uh, using Excel to help me with the calculations, so our z value is 3,392 minus 3,218, divided by 287 over the square root of 45. So 4.06699. And so this step is the exact same as what we did before when we examined this problem using uh, critical values. Now the next step is not to compare this versus a critical value. Instead we will compute the observed significance level. The observed significance level, or the p-value, is basically what's the chance of seeing something this bad or worse. Um, it's a way of quantifying exactly how bad or how improbable this event actually is. To quantify that, we're going to find the probability of something this extreme or worse. So we have the bell curve and 4.06699 and the area to the right will be the p-value, the probability of something this extreme or even more extreme. Okay, and so on a TI calculator, I would use the normal CDF command with 4.06699 as my left endpoint and 10 to the 99 as my right endpoint. Uh, using Excel, the p value would be equal to 1 minus norm s dist of um, that value. So, norm s dist, uh, for those of you that use Excel, returns the area to the left, and so 1 minus that would be the area to the right. And so the p value works out to be uh, 2.38 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so about two chances in 100,000. And more colloquially, if I just simply take the reciprocal of what we just obtained, sorry, it's about one chance in about 42,000. So the logic is, if I accept the null hypothesis, if I believe that it is simply due to chance, then I must also accept the fact that something that only had one chance in 52,000 of happening just happened. The p-value that we see here is less than my, my preferred tolerance of alpha. And so therefore my decision will be to reject the null hypothesis. And so let me put the conclusion up here in words. Actually, let me do that, uh, just type it up in Excel might be easiest. So we reject the null hypothesis. It appears that the store is attracting more customers after the redesign. Okay, so let's uh, review. The p-value is the probability of seeing something this extreme or more extreme. In our case, we, the answer was 1 in 42,000 and that is less than our value of alpha 
and so therefore uh, we reject the null hypothesis. Now if you recall, the, we did this problem using critical values before, and the critical value worked out to be, I believe, 1.65 approximately. And 1.65, so that the area in green here that I've have, the area in green is about five is five percent. That's the alpha. However, the p-value is going to be the area in red. Clearly, the area in red is going to be less than the total area in green, and therefore uh, we reject the null hypothesis. Said another way, 4.06699 lies in the rejection region, because with this cutoff on this side my decision is to reject the null hypothesis while on the other side the decision is to retain the null hypothesis so I come to the same conclusion either way I can compare the Z coordinates 1.65 or 1.64 uh, whatever it is versus 4.06699. So I can compare z coordinates or I can compare areas. Either uh, technique per leads me to the same conclusion that I reject the null hypothesis. So p-values are basically a alternative way of making a decision and in most scientific work and most published work and in most business reports, uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, both get reported, both the p-value as well as the critical value.